friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be quite hefty. Um, I am gonna go through eight years of fangirling and my life. TBH, those two things are the same thing because my life is fangirling. A couple of you asked about why I love Taylor Swift so much and what my story with her kind of looks like. So I thought I'm gonna film this video. What a better time than now, if you know what I mean. Yeah, this is my, this is my story with Taylor Swift. Oh my god, seriously, this will be crazy. This will be crazy. So 2011 was the year when I found Taylor. It wasn't love at first sight. It was love at the second sight. I remember that my best friend, Julia, who then was just an online friend, posted Taylor's um, The Story of Us music video to this little chat section for like all of our friends and said that oh my god Taylor looks like a Hufflepuff here and it looks like the Hogwarts library we were massive massive Potterheads we still are but we were like crazy crazy Harry Potter fans then I watched the video I liked the song but it didn't click with me right right there then I was in fifth grade and I was very heavily bullied that year first only in the school but then also later online it was a really really difficult spring for me I was very lonely I probably had one friend and then my online friends so I was very very addicted to internet I wanted to watch the Hufflepuff girl music video again as I called it and I found the music video I listened to it again I remember almost falling off my chair because suddenly the song spoke to me I fell in love it was right there and then I fell in love and I got very heavily obsessed. <laughs> I started ramming through all of Taylor's three previous albums, Speak Now, Fearless, and her debut album, Taylor Swift. And she was actually on tour when I became a fan. She was on Speak Now tour, which is my favorite tour of all time, but I couldn't attend it because I was 11. And yeah, this was around the time when I had Twitter and stuff. So I started like following all these like tour news and Taylor news. I watched so many interviews and I started speaking better English. In summer 2011, I also met Julia, Julu, my best friend. Um, we were online friends before that, then we met and it just clicked. And her love for Taylor boosted mine. Without her, I wouldn't know about this woman like I know now and I am eternally grateful for her. Filled my walls with Taylor posters. I had over 300 posters and pictures on my wall. It was like a wallpaper. I also started watching a lot of award shows that she attended and this whole award show thing continued through the years. I woke up at crazy hours and watched all the award shows that I just possibly could. Her fourth album, Red, came out in 2012 and this was a big thing for me. I would be there when an era starts, when an album is released and I was so excited about that. As a Taylor fan, Red was a pretty tough era and it wasn't the best time to be a Taylor fan. A lot of people just left the fandom because Swifties got a lot, a lot, a lot of hate. Um, Taylor was getting more and more hate and there was the, the nasty rumors started growing. Just being a fan of her made me a target of hate in real life and online. But my love for Taylor and her music was too strong to care about that. So I didn't care. The Red Era actually turned out to be pretty good time for me personally. The beginning of Red Era wasn't important just because it was a new Taylor album and a new Taylor era. It was also very important to me because I went from elementary school to secondary school and I left all the bullies and my past behind me and I went into something new, new people, new school, with a new Taylor soundtrack. And I was so excited. Actually, the first day of secondary school, I woke up at 2 a.m. again to watch a Taylor live stream where she announced the name of the album, Red, and played a few songs and released the first single, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. And this song is still such a big part of my identity. I have never dated anyone, I have never gone through a breakup, but this song just shaped me in a lot of ways. The music video was released a, about a week after the live stream, and that was the time when I r decided that I want to look like Taylor. I already had bangs, and I had to change my glasses anyway, so I just 
bought like black Ray-Bans. People told me that I look like her and I was so honored and so happy and I just I just really wanted to be like her in school. Some people didn't know my name but they knew me as the Taylor Swift girl. That was the this the beginning of my reputation which I actually love so no tea there. I went into this new school with confidence and happy vibes and those ended up being pretty good three years of my life. I wasn't hated, I wasn't bullied. I think the most important thing was that the people around me didn't hate me. They didn't hate me for loving Taylor. They just accepted it and they didn't really care. I was known as the Taylor Swift girl, but I didn't get hate and I was just allowed to just love this this artist and everyone just knew about it and it was really cool. I was just me and I was allowed to be me, oh my god. Hello future references! The Red Arrow was also the era when I saw Taylor live. Then we decided with Julia that we're gonna get tickets. And first my parents didn't let me. They were like, no, you're not going to London to see this artist. Like, we know you love her. Like, God, we've heard all the songs and we see your room, but you're not going. But I decided that I'm not gonna take a no here. Um, and actually, Julo's mom already bought the tickets. So I took a paper and a pen and I ran around my school telling people I want to go to this concert, but I want to show my parents that I really want to go. So can you please sign this paper um, that says that you have to let Vilma go to this concert? And it worked. <laughs> I don't know how, but my parents were like, okay, you're crazy, go. We got Jill's big sister to come with us to London and we saw Taylor in February 2014. It was really, really important to me. I got to hear the songs that I had been pl blasting in my room on my own and it was just crazy to see her live. I wish I could go back. It was just amazing. Yeah, the Red Arrow was pretty good for me, even though the hate was a lot to take, but I just started to ignore it and I was still suffering from the consequences of bullying, even though I wasn't bullied anymore, which was great. Oh my god, I almost forgot! I am wearing a uh, Red Tour t-shirt! Can you see that? It says Taylor Swift 13. It's really cool, I love it, and it's it marks a really important milestone in my life. I saw my biggest idol ever, first time, live! 2014 wasn't an awesome year just for the Red Tour concert I went to. It was also an amazing year because 1989 came out and this album is one of my absolute favorites. Immediately, I loved the vibe, I loved the 80s sounds. But yeah, from the very beginning, from the release of Shake It Off, which I almost missed, Julu called me in the middle of the night like, oh my god, Vilma, are you up? You are not watching the live stream, come on, where are you? I woke up, watched the live stream, heard Shake It Off, loved it, loved it, loved it. Fell in love with the album later when it came out. This was the album when I realized that I was over a lot of suffering and heartbreak that I had been going through. So was Taylor. She talked about how Red was a very painful album, but now 1989 was like this new thing and it was amazing and it was the same experience for me, which made me feel more connected to her. It wasn't only that that made me feel very connected to her, but it was also the fact that she started hanging out online a lot. I loved having a Taylor fan blog. The music video for Blank Space came out in the beginning of November. I made a theory and posted it on Tumblr about the music video. Taylor liked it and followed me. And this, yes, I have a Taylor follow. She has noticed me. This was the craziest experience. It still blows my mind. I still go on Tumblr and check if she's following my blog and she is. And when I found out, I called Julu, I was crying and she thought someone died, but it was just me being an emotional drama queen. The interactive, very connected Taylor who was doing interviews and being online, it was just the best time of being a Swifty. Then she announced the tour for 1989 and my mom said that I couldn't go but Jula got the tickets for us. So my parents again said, okay, go. And I saw Taylor in Amsterdam in 2015. <laughs> friends online on Tumblr and I met so many of them. Here's a story that I need to tell because this is this is the one thing I regret in life. If I could change something, I would change this because, okay, let me tell you. In the arena, our seats were on the floor, not next to the stage, but we had like seats. There was like a little hallway next to the, the seats and like doors 
out of the arena. As a Taylor fan who knows everything about her, which is creepy, I knew what her mom looks like. And her mom is a big part of the fandom. She's called Mama Swift or Andrea Swift, but we call her Mama Swift. I saw her walking towards the back of the arena. There was a weird thing with the guard, like there was like a security guard that had been kind of angry at us for stepping over a line and I d didn't want, I, I couldn't move really. Julia was next to me and I went, oh my god, that's Mama Swift, oh my god, and we waved to her, she waved at us, she was smiling, we were like, do we go and hug her or not? And the moment slipped past us. I could have given a hug to Mama Swift, but I didn't because of a stupid security guard. I regret this so much, like so freaking much, I cannot even tell you. So yeah, that happened, my greatest regret in life. But otherwise, the Amsterdam concert was great. It was such a special experience and I just love the album so much. There is a song on that album called Clean, which makes me very emotional because that's the most important song for me in the whole wide world. And hearing that live was magical. I grew so much as a person. I finally was okay with the things in my past and I put those behind and I was ready to move forward. Like I said, Taylor started getting more and more hate during the Red Era and this continued through the 1989 era. She was really, really, really connected with her fans, us, Swifties, and there was the secret sessions and amazing things that happened to us, but she got so much hate for so many things and there was rumors all the time about her attacking her, attacking her relationships, mocking her, so she disappeared. It was so sad to see how much hate she got for her relationship and for dating like a 20 year old. So I wasn't surprised at all that she disappeared from the media. At one point, even some points in my life, I didn't have friends, but Taylor was there. She was there with her music. Did not know who I was. It didn't matter because I knew who she was and I knew her music and I knew her story because she talked about bullying, how she was bullied. I could see that even if you're bullied, even if people hate you, and you go through things, you can succeed and get everything in life that you work on, that you dream about. Now she wasn't there and I understood why and I support, I stood here, I stood here for her, I supported her. I was still proud to be a Swifty even though, again, you got drama and hate for it, but I, I just didn't care. She was more, more stable and reliable for me than a lot of other people in my life. <laughs> After a long silence from Taylor, Taylor deleted all of her Instagram photos and quietly came back. I mean, she came back quietly, but when she came back, it was loud. We heard that there will be a song and we didn't know what it will be like, but the, the vibe was dark and there was a snake in her Instagram feed. And then Look What You Made Me Do came out and it was something so different. We had never heard anything like that before. Uh, yeah, we were shook. I was really, really, really excited, but I was sad because she wasn't doing any interviews. She wasn't posting on Instagram like she used to. All of her previous Instagrams were deleted. And I was also going through, again, another difficult time in my life. And I had just started senior year, so there was a lot of pressure, a lot of things that I dealt with. But having new Taylor music to wait, for made it so much easier. Then Reputation came out in November and I held a party for me and a few, a few of my friends and we dressed up in Taylor outfits like different tailors. That was a lot of fun and I'm definitely gonna do that with this upcoming new album that will come at some point. I think it was actually during our little Reputation party when I heard that there is a competition by Energy Finland, the radio station. They were looking for the biggest Finnish Swifty. We took a lot of photos during that party and I tagged Energy Finland in them. I posted a long, long comment about my history as a Taylor Swift fan and I won. I won the contest. The most absurd, craziest thing, the prize was two tickets to the Capital FM Jingle Bell Ball concert in London. And this was a big thing because Taylor hadn't been live in a long time and she had been away and now she was back and I was like, I want this prize more than anything. I need to see her. Then I went to see Taylor 
for the third time in December 2017 in London. I can't believe it was true. Around the time I heard that I won the contest and I would see Taylor live in December, the tickets for the Reputation Stadium tour came out and yes, we bought tickets to the Dublin concert, the first Dublin concert, but we ended up buying other tickets as well. It was like a week before the concert, we decided to buy pet tickets to the second night and that was the best decision of my life. <laughs> Damn, I am still blown away that we did that. Both nights were absolutely amazing. I was so close to her that I could see her face and it was weird because I was like, she actually looks like that. Like her face looks like what it looks like in the pictures. Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> I think I have to tell you a little concert story here because I told you the Mama Swift one but this is a very happy story because I got noticed by the guitarist Paul Sidoti who has been touring and working with Taylor since she started so Paul has been one of the only ma band members from the early days this is so weird to explain because Paul is Taylor's guitarist like I've seen him in the concert videos and like all the live performances and her little vlogs that she used to make. I'm not like a fan of Paul's, but in a way I am because he has been there with Taylor, touring, making music, recording, performing since the early days of Taylor's career. He saw me in the crowd jumping and having the best time of my life and he throws guitar picks around and he saw me and tried to throw me one. I didn't catch it, a girl next to me caught it. I have pictures of him smiling at me because Taylor was walking the other way and everyone else went like this but I was there like Paul oh my god that's Paul that's Paul and he saw me and just a little bit later during the you belong with me part Paul got my eye contact and went like that. He threw a guitar pick and I saw it went past here and I dived. I dived so quickly. It's here. It's a little guitar pick that says Taylor Reputation. He threw it for me and I am really grateful. And for once, I didn't miss the opportunity. Seeing Taylor being so happy and just absolutely glowing, it made me really happy. There was new surprise songs to wake up to every morning. And even though the album Reputation is about, well, Taylor's reputation, how people saw her and how she couldn't tell the world who she was because other people decided for her but Taylor was so happy she stopped caring about the rumors and what people said about her and even though this era was really difficult for me personally I was really happy to be there for her the previous eras she had been there for me and I felt like finally I could give some something back it made me feel very good rep era ended in the end of last year when the tour ended but after that it has still been a massive freaking crazy roller coaster because first there was the rep tour movie that came out on Netflix which you can go and watch I would if I were you and you haven't seen it yet and even if you have go and watch it again because it's crazy good and Taylor started posting more on Instagram and she started attending more award shows which I was so happy about and then there was the Taylor Swift 2019 calendar with the stamps. If you're not a Swifty, you have to Google because I'm not gonna explain everything. But there were stamps on specific dates in the calendar. And the thing is, Taylor does nothing, absolutely nothing without a reason. There's always a reason behind everything. And she loves giving us clues and puzzles and tasks to figure out. So we knew something was up, but we didn't know what. We were so crazy and making such stupid theories that the whole fandom became a fandom of clowns and Taylor even called us out in an award show. Yeah, that was a really low point for us Swifties. <laughs> but we weren't completely crazy because soon Taylor released a countdown to April 26th, which was two days ago, and she teased us with pictures 
that we didn't know what they meant. We knew something was happening and these pictures meant something that was related to the date. And when the date came, I had a mental breakdown. No way! I'm gonna freaking pass out! Because Taylor released a song called Me, I would have died if it was just that. But it wasn't just that. I found Panic at the Disco this year. I know, very late. Don't judge me. Some people are just very slow. Maybe like end of January, early February. And I absolutely fell in love. That band has become very dear to me. Very, very important. And ah, uh, yeah, I mean, I have a reaction video of me re reacting to the music video and the song, but yeah, it was a song with Brendan Urie who I've been like just talking about for the past three months. So when this song came out, I absolutely just lost it. You can see it in the video, it's embarrassing, but like, yeah. Just seeing the video changed everything for me. It's been a very low time for me for some time now. I've been struggling on my own. The song was just everything for me. It was happy and it told a really important message and it had my two idols <laughs> who had written the song together, who shot the music video together, who s recorded it together. It got me so excited about this new era. And even though I absolutely loved the rap era, she telling her own story, it was a really difficult time for me and I'm so ready to go to a new era and a new time and Taylor releasing albums is a big thing for me, as you can see. Like, Taylor's albums mark times in my life. I see my life in like, okay, the Red era, the 1989 era, the rap era. I feel like it's easier for me to go and live my life to the fullest when there is this album coming. I can't even think about the album right now because I'm still so shocked by me, the song with Taylor and Brendan in it. But I'm, I'm just really happy that there will be a new album and it will be different. Who knows what it will be like, but I know that I will love it. And Taylor seems so happy and excited about it. I'm expecting that it's a happy album. It's, it's something new and I'm excited. Taylor has been the most constant thing in my life, the most constant person who has always been there for me with her music. I am so happy I have her as my role model. I appreciate her songwriting skills. I appreciate her as a musician. I appreciate her as a person. I have my history, my story with her from eight years ago and it hasn't ended. It's still continuing and there is even things I couldn't tell in this video because they're too painful and too personal to tell but I've gotten through those things because I had someone singing songs I needed to hear. I've gotten through so much because of music, specifically Taylor's music. Songs like The Outside, A Place in This World, Tell Me Why, Mean, Long Live, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, Red, The Moment I Knew, Sweeter Than Fiction, All You Had To Do Was Stay, Shake It Off, Delicate, and of course Clean. Those songs have gotten me through all the worst times in my life and I could never thank Taylor enough for writing, for performing, for singing and for existing. I just, I just couldn't. There is no way. She has affected my life, my story so much. I've literally grown up with her music by my side. I was 11 when I became her fan and now I'm almost 20. I would not be the person I am today if, if I wasn't a Swifty, if I didn't know this woman. The new era and the new album, they excite me so much. And I feel like it will be an important era, an important album maybe for me. I feel like I'm going into a new time in my life right now. And music is so extremely important to me and albums and songs mark times in my life. And I'm so happy to have her back with more confidence and color and happiness than ever. I cannot wait to see her on tour again and I wish one day I'll have the chance to actually tell her how much she means to me, how much she has changed me and my life with her music. And I can't even begin to tell you how much it means to me that this whole new era has started with a song collab with Brendan Yuri, who yes, is a very new idol and person who I've started following and whose music I've started to listen, but already he has become one of those people who I thank for 
writing, making music and for existing. I'm really happy about the new song, I absolutely love it. Taylor's new cat is so cute, oh my god, we all love Benjamin, right? She just seems so much happier and it makes me so happy. I'm gonna end the video here before I start crying. <laughs> I am not kidding, I've been filming this video for hours, so I'm sorry that this is a very long one and a very chatty one. It was really important for me to tell this story to you and tell why Taylor is so, so important to me because she is so so important. There's a reason why I talk about her and there's a reason why she's on my walls and there's a reason why I want a tattoo of her lyrics. There is just a lot of reasons why she's so important. I thought this is a very important story to tell so thank you for listening and thank you for caring. You all are absolutely amazing and I appreciate you so much. I love you all. I'll see you next week. Not on Sunday, earlier than that. Bye!